The following program has been rated PG-13. Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of His Word in Israel. Once again, I have the honor and the privilege to come to the royal family and say this. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And Israel, thank you so much for bringing it in again with your brother. And Israel, tonight we definitely have to have a discussion. Now, let, let me say this here before we begin, Israel. Usually what we'll do, we'll start this program off with showcasing the talents of our people. But tonight, this one is very, very special to me, and I'm going to tell you why. Because when the Most High allows things to line up, it is a great honor. Because this particular one here, coming from this king, tonight, if it, it dropped right in place. And it did. So I want to reserve this one here for the end because this one is very, very special. And trust me when I tell you, it fell directly in place. So I'm giddy about this one. I can't wait to get to the end. I really, really can't. But tonight, Israel, we are going to be going over this contract that was drawn up on your behalf, your behalf. This official contract with Black America that that was submitted by Ice Cube. Okay? Now, let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask you a serious question. Was anybody contacted in regards to your thoughts, ideas, or opinions about a contract that was written on your behalf? Were you contacted? Because I wasn't. I wasn't contacted at all. Did I miss a black caucus or a consensus or some sort of meeting that should have engaged us to give our collective ideas and feedback in regards to a contract that was written on our behalf? I wasn't. Now, Israel, I have a very big problem with that because I'm like, wait a second, who in the world came up with this contract and where did it come from so fast? Now, I'm going to be very honest. That is a tactic of Esau, and it is. Now, Ice Cube may be the spokesperson for this. And let me say this right now. This is in no way, shape, or form a blast against Ice Cube or for me to try to ridicule this king. No, because as we already know from the comments made from Ice Cube before, he at least has some knowledge about who we are, okay? But he went from... And in the streets, nigga, to an industry, nigga. All right? So, I don't trust this man. Because he works collectively with Esau. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, as we already know, he has a platform that he can actually speak to a broadcast of millions of people. He was just recently on CNN and he did not take the opportunity to talk about the Israelites, us, the very same people that he put out on his uh, social media that we are the children of Israel. OK, but like I said, he did make this mention here, but we got to be very careful. And before anything else, before I even get, get into this contract, Based on what I just said, I want you to go to Romans. First of all, before we even do that, I want everyone to open your Bible to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. And I want everybody to go to the book of Romans chapter 16. Because of course, even though we're reading this contract that was written on your behalf, we're always going to make sure that the scriptures are implemented. So based on what I just said in regards to I don't want to call him Ice Cube. You know why? Because that's not his name. I want to call him King O'Shea. Now, for those of you who don't know, O'Shea is his birth name, 
his birth given name. So I'm going to refer to this king as King O'Shea versus his stage name. But I want you to go to Romans chapter 16, go down to verse 17. And let me read this here to you, Israel. Now, I beseech you, brethren, talking about brethren, us family, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And I wanted to bring that out there because like I said, we're going to go through this contract. We're going to read this contract verbatim and it's not long either. It's not a very long contract, but it is definitely something that you need to observe and to review being that it was done on your behalf because you need to know whether or not if this is an actual benefit or if this is something that is going to later cause consequences for you. All right, so we're gonna go over this here right now. So let's go ahead and do this here. And of course, I'm going to leave the link in the description, but I'm gonna go over this. I'm gonna read this, all right? Let me get a drink before uh, we do this here. I'm, I'm gonna be reading a lot. All right, here it is. The official summarized contract. As citizens and lawmakers both, we are joining to demand the contract with Black America be addressed immediately to finally create the more perfect union all Americans deserve. I gotta stop for a second because if this is a contract for Black America, why are all Americans deserving if this is a contract about us? You see, that's an Esau tactic already, implementing themselves in something that's supposed to be for us. So right out of the gate, this is already shady, okay? Let's continue. As such, it is time for a complete excuse me, uh, paradigm shift in how we run our institutions and operate our country. The problems facing America are too deep and wide to simply reform one area or another. Long lasting solutions demand a comprehensive, thorough rethink of America so that each new approach in each area supports the success of the others. This contract with Black America will provide conceptual approaches in several areas. Derek Hamilton in the preface to the contract says, this contract with Black America strikes at the heart of racism and presents a blueprint to achieve racial economic justice. So let me stop for a second because this again, I ask you, were you contacted and were your thoughts, opinion, or ideas given? So the question is, who came up with this and who determined that these coming, uh, I'll call them statutes, that these coming statutes are for our benefit? Who decided this? Let me turn this off real quick. I already know people are gonna stop bothering me. It's the devil, it's the devil. <laughs> All right, let's continue. It was written in the backdrop of the killing of George Floyd, which set off a wave of protests not seen in the civil rights era of the 1950s and 60s and a global pandemic in which the black morality rate is more than double the white rate and in which 45%, nearly half, of black owned businesses close now. As of last week, Israel, remember, civil rights. That should always be a ding, 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 ding. Wait a minute, stop. Er, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's definitely review this. This whole civil rights thing, uh-uh. All right? Because last week, we learned exactly what all that civil rights nonsense was all about. So already right here, I'm like, uh-uh, no thanks. All right, now let's continue. 
that the impact of something presumably random, such as a pandemic, however catastrophic, can be so linked to one's racial identity is highly problematic and further evidence that as a nation, we are failing miserably. And that I do agree with. This links to a larger political and economic vulnerability, whether we're in a pandemic or not. The immoral devaluation of black lives have been ingrained in America's political economy and is long overdue for a reckoning. Now that right there, I 100% completely agree with. And for those of you in this truth, you already know why I do. Let's continue. This contract with black America is a patriotic pathway, Ugh. a patriotic pathway to promote our shared prosperity and achieve racial economic justice. Ambassador Andrew Young is equally supportive. Let me stop real quick. Andrew Young was also another person involved in the civil rights movement. So here we have this term patriotic pathway. Now, as far as being a patriot of a country that hates black people and would much rather kill us in the streets, shoot us down, degrade us, degrade our women, degrade our men, uh, create a prison industrial complex, there is no way that I'm being patriotic to this country. No way, shape, form, or fashion. No, no. All right. Let me read this again. Uh, but let me continue. The pandemic has revealed to us the importance of the essential worker of which many are minorities. And with that mention of minorities, that's not only talking about blacks, but that would be blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. We can grow no stronger without improving the substantiability of those at the bottom of the economic period. Excuse me, pyramid. The contract for black America is a comprehensive step toward an action plan that addresses the future stability of minorities and essential workers across the nation. To address racial inequality after reading the contract with black America, we, the undersigned, agree to support and demand an open debate and a clear and fair vote within the first 100 days of the 117th Congress in 2021 on the following proposals to be codified into specific bills. All right, that was a mouthful. So pretty much what is that saying? What, that, what this whole thing right here is saying, Israel, is that there were some bills, some proposals that were made on your behalf that they want addressed and put into place, put into action for us, for black people. Not only black people, <laughs> as you can tell by this hair, but by minorities, of course. Now, that does include uh, Hispanics and Native Americans, but also who's also included in that. And remember the term that they use, all Americans deserve. Mm -mm. All American includes everybody. That's a problem. So right here from this official summarized contract, this is already a problem. Already a problem. And for those of you in this truth, you already know why it is a problem. All right. So now let's go to the next portion here. Bill to guarantee black opportunity and representation. Adopt a plan of neo reconstruction. Now, neo just means new. So adopt a plan of new reconstruction to redress past wrongs systematically imposed on black Americans economically throughout many generations that has resulted in a wealth gap where the average white family has 10 times the wealth of a black family. In addition to some of the economic initiatives listed below, also formally apologize to black Americans for past discrimination and slavery. Y'all already know we're going to get into that. 
Additionally, black opportunity and representation will include affirmative action in schools, public and private, per student funding in states on an equal basis instead of paid by local property taxes, black representation on all government civil rights bodies, civil rights classes, mandatory in elementary schools, gerrymandering reform, additional polling places in black and minority neighborhoods, Juneteenth to become a federal holiday. Okay. <laughs> So, I got to stop in regards to the Juneteenth. Here we have the Most High God that gave us all of our holidays that we are to observe. But, again, with Ice Cube, I don't know where he is in his walk. But, as you can tell, the Spirit of the Most High is not behind this. Because... Here we have all of the high holy days that we are supposed to be observing, but he wants Juneteenth to be recognized? Come on now. And I, I can't just say Ice Cube because I don't know if he's the person that penned this or whatnot, but he is definitely the spokesperson for this, so he has to be the person to take the chewing, okay? So that was that. Now let's go to the next one. Bank lending reform. Bank lending will be regulated to require banks to lend a percentage of all loan and credit categories on an equal basis to the black population each bank serves. Stop. That's a problem. So what do you mean by this? By the black population each bank serves. What do you mean? Are these going to be limited banks or all banks? You see, you got to listen to their wording. You, you really got to watch what they say. This is why you should just, when you read things, take your time. Take your time when you read things. However, the minimum threshold must yearly meet the percentage equal to the national black population, currently approximately 13.4. Rates on black loans federally and from banks to be same average rates as whites, okay? That was bank lending reform. Now, let me <laughs> say this here. I can already see Esau laughing about this. I can just see it like, <laughs> oh, these niggas got the nerve. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Um, Federal funding of baby bonds. Pass federal program providing every child with a government funded trust account at birth, starting with $1,000 contribution. And we'll get into that later. As proposed by Senator Booker and Representative Presley, accounts to be managed by the Treasury and only those born into lower wealth families. Listen to this again. And only those born into lower wealth families would receive more contributions each year up to $46,500 total. At age 18, access to the funds allowed but use restricted to asset enhancing act actions such as buying homes, starting businesses, and funding education. Now that right there, for one, I don't like the amount. And we'll get into that later. I don't like the amount, but I do appreciate the idea of that one. I, 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 I agree with that one there. I think that's a good idea. All right, next one. Federal Reserve and government pensions. Brace yourself, Israel. <laughs> For qualified, stop. Stop. How do you determine who's qualified? You see, it's, it's always the wording. You got to listen and look for these words. For qualified black Americans. So again, how do you determine who's qualified for this? You see, this is not for all black America. It's not. As you see right here in their very own literature. For qualified black Americans, Federal Reserve to allow a one-time interest-free loan for home ownership. 
the Fed to ensure banks and institution it oversees comply with bank lending reform. Fed to adopt modern monetary theory. Modern monetary theory. A theory. Modern monetary theory with goal of full employment and avoidance of actual inflation. Federal and state pension funds control over a trillion dollars. Remember, we're gonna get all we're gonna get into all this late here later. They must allocate 13.4 of their investments into black-owned enterprises and businesses, venture capital, and private equity funds that take money. Public entities must invest 13.4 of their total funds in black-owned businesses. So what if you have private companies? If this one here is based on public entities, why not the private? Because these private entities are all, right now, they are working off of old money. Now, you know what old money is? Old money is the term for money earned by slavery. That right there is out of line. This is offensive. I don't give a damn what you say. This is offensive. So why only public entities? In other words, this 13.4 percentage more than likely is going to be based on stocks. So now you know what happens with the stock market every once in a while. The stock market will crash. So if the stock market actually crashes, where does that leave us? This is all set up, Israel. Next, finance oversight. A banking commission or even a cabinet or sub-cabinet post will be set up to overlook and report on black and minority lending, housing ownership and mortgages, and enforcement of items two and three above. Such authority will also oversee and audit federal programs such as Economic Opportunity Zones and Community Reinvestment Act, CRA, to determine who is benefiting from disbursement of such funds. Will provide for a transparent reporting mechanism for abuses to economic programs designed to benefit communities in need. So now I got to go back here for a second. Such authority will also oversee and audit federal programs such as Economic Opportunity Zones and Community Reinvestment Act. I got to ask y'all a question. Who are these authorities? You see, there are too many unanswered questions here because the ghostwriters of this contract are nowhere to be seen. I want to see some faces. Who wrote this? Who was the person that actually delegated Ice Cube, number one, to speak on our behalf in the first place, number two, to who, who was in the room when all of this here was done? I want to know that. I want to know who the hell was in the room. This is all of the, <laughs> all of this literature here, and they write it in such a way to where the average thinking person is going to just read right through this without actually stopping and asking questions about the terms being used. All right, the next one, personal data and credit. Most states publicly release bulk data about arrestees unchecked like the 1970 Fair Credit Reporting Act regarding credit data, there must be guidelines regarding arrest records that allow similar privacy and, accu and accuracy protections and the right to dispute and correct inaccurate data. Credit services will be reformed to mandate consideration of individual consumer data on rent, utility, cell phone, and other like bill payments, okay? Now, as you see here, it, it, it mentioned, listen to this here, rent, utility, cell phone, and other like bill payments. So why just rent? Why not home ownership? 
You know why? Because the home ownership was covered earlier in its own separate thing. Wait a second. If this is going to be a reform or a, a neo revision, as it said here, uh, this is pretty much the same damn thing that is happening right now. So really nothing's changing at all. In other words, so what this is saying right here is, okay, you know what? Based on the Credit Act of 1970, how about we just go ahead and just leave things the same, but just, just give them a break on their credit. That's pretty much what that's saying. It, 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 it's really nothing major. Like I said, you got to look at the wording. All right, next. Prison reform. Privately run prisons will be abolished. Prison labor disallowed without consent and nonviolent offenders incarcerated for 10 years or longer will be freed if good behavior standards met. All prisoners for marijuana possession freed. First offense for illegal drug use or possession to require government payment for entry into an approved drug rehabilitation program rather than imprisonment. Once any prisoner completes sentence, voting rights are restored. I agree with that. I actually like that one. Now, you may not agree with it, but for me, I agree with that. I think that's really good. I think so. Because believe it or not, criminals are always going to be here. Yes, selling drugs is a crime. I don't give a damn what you say. And especially when you sell it to our people, it's a crime. Not only is it a crime, it's a sin. And quite frankly, when it comes to drugs, like I said, that's not something I play with. I don't like it at all. I can't stand the fact when our people sell drugs to our own people because... We are killing our own people. So yes, I am dead set against that. And this I do agree with. And just like how the Most High looks at us and say, you know what? Your sins can be forgiven. All you have to do is repent. I think that very same opportunity should be given to our brothers and sisters that are involved in a life of crime, especially with drugs, to have that opportunity. I do agree with that there. Yes, I do. All right. Judicial reforms. Eliminate mandatory minimums and three strike laws. The Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice reformed through stricter guidelines and greater oversight over police departments. DOJ, mean Department of Justice, can be sued for noncompliance. Lynching to become a federal hate crime and the Ku Klux Klan declared a terrorist organization. Now, as far as I know, weren't they already supposed to be? I thought they were already supposed to be a damn terrorist organization and a hate group. But do you know why they never had to put any focus on them? Because they started looking at the black Hebrew Israelites or Hebrew Israelites. And let me go ahead and make the correction right now. We are neither. We are not black Hebrew Israelites. We are not Hebrew Israelites. We are Israelites. That's it. You see, they take the black Hebrew and Hebrew and put that on there so that they can go ahead and make it into a terrorist group. Okay. No, we're not going to do that. Or a hate group or whatever else you want to call it. All right, the Most High God said we're Israelites, neither of those two. All right, the Police Reform Act. Police reforms will be implemented in an expansive act that will at minimum include elimination of qualified immunity, requirement of mandatory malpractice insurance for police offices, make municipalities liable for unconstitutional actions by police, mandatory use of dashboard and body cams, elimination of chokeholds and no-knock warrants, establishment of residency requirements, de-escalation training, and requirements to update training, severe penalties for evidence tampering, including withholding DNA. A federal database of police and disciplinary records established and made public and once fired for cause cannot be rehired. Creation of Office of Independent Prosecutors to solely focus on prosecuting police accused of wrong wrongdoing. Other reforms as listed in greater detail in the contract with Black America. Now, quite frankly, this is already supposed to be happening. So it's like, why are you reintroducing something here that they already supposed to be doing in the first place? You know? As you can see, the word justice 
It doesn't matter. It, 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 it does It's not even real when it comes to America. It's not. Because these things that were just mentioned here, these are things like, okay, I thought this was already in place. Is it not? It just goes to show you. And I'll be very honest with you. For those of you that are not familiar with the laws in your city, and your states, y'all better get very familiar with them. I'm telling you right now. All right, FCC licensing of public airwaves. Broadcast networks will be required to air black produced content equal to 20% of the total content on the network as measured by time. Fair enough. Next, Confederate monuments and institutions. Elimination of all Confederate statues and uses or displays of Confederate flags on government grounds or property with public access. Rename all streets, schools, public structures, etc. named after Confederate soldiers or leaders. A memorial will be built in Washington, D.C. to victims of police excessive force. Okay. I mean, let me... Explain something to y'all right now. That's never going to happen. You know why? Because this country loves their heroes. I'm going to tell you right now, that one that gets shot down, I, I know they're laughing at that. They're like, there ain't no way in the hell that's going to happen. And it's not. You know? And <laughs> they tried the thing with Christopher Columbus or whatnot. And the reason why they brought that one down is because they don't want the Hispanics knowing that Christopher Columbus was the person that was responsible for their particular slavery. Uh, and not, not just him, but also, like I said, the conquest of the conquistadors. That's the only reason why they took his down. So don't be fooled by that. OK, they took that down to keep the Hispanics from knowing that they were actually slaves, too. So that's crafty counsel by Esau. But this other one here. First of all, let me ask you a question for a person that may have been victimized by the police, right? Okay. What if he actually has a background that is a legitimate criminal background? Hmm? What if this man was a child molester? And I'm not saying a, a, uh, an accused one. I'm saying, what if this man was actually a child molester? You want to go ahead and put up a monument of this man? No, thank you. I don't think so. So that's why I don't agree with that one or whatever. I don't. I, as far as the excessive force, I think something should happen to the officers involved, not only them, but their captains and that police department. And it requires jail time and money. Now that right there, I think will take care of a lot. But guess what? We, we're not done. We got two more to read on this contract. Two more, just two more. Okay, AJP program for education and jobs. Now, I want y'all to listen to this one. Adoption of AJP, a public-private program that provides access to jobs and education and or training for people willing to put in the work and commitment. I agree with that 100%. I think that's awesome. I like that one. I really like that one. And I like the way that it's worded and or training for people willing to put in the work and commitment. Now, with that there, I think this should be more broad. In other words, for those individuals that have just been released from prison. They, they serve their time, all right? They, they're trying to get back out into society. So for the person that was in there, male or female, that changed their life around, you know, they have been reformed in prison. They want to get out there and make a living for themselves. Absolutely. I think that's awesome. I agree with that one. All right. The last one, black responsibility. Chronic poverty creates an atmosphere full of negativity, frustration, hopelessness, depression, alcoholism, drug abuse, crime, and violence. These are some of conditions that plague the black community, which is dealing with extreme generational poverty. So Israel, I got to stop there for a second because y'all know exactly what that's all about, right? What is that, Israel? The curses. The curses. That's what we face. That is what we face. All right, let's continue. As we begin to gain social and economic equality, it is our duty to clean up ourselves and our community. This contract is a two-way street. 
As we gain social and economic equality, we must begin to dissolve any bitterness in our hearts for past wrongs. See, now this is the end here. I want y'all to see this now. I want you to see how this is now starting to be laid out. Watch this. Watch this again. I'm going to read this again. As we begin to gain social and economic equality, let me stop there for a second, Israel. Do y'all remember when we went over the lesson on equality? So for those of you that have not seen it, if you haven't seen it, I want you to go and get the lesson that says, does God want equality? All right, let's continue. It is our duty to clean up ourselves and our community. This contract is a two-way street. As we gain social and economic equality, we must begin to dissolve any bitterness in our hearts for past wrongs. Now, Israel, I got to stop there because as we learned before, the Most High said, remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. So this contract just right here is having us go against what the Most High God said. So just this right here, I can't get with. You know, this right here, you know, is the turning of the cheek. Mm -mm -mm. Not going to do that. Why? Because the Most High God said, wait a second. For you Israelites amongst yourselves, amongst you brethren, yes, you turn that other cheek. But in regards to your oppressors, in regards to the people that actually have you in these conditions right now, as we are reading a contract asking for them to please have mercy on us, the Most High God said, mm, I didn't tell you to do that, <laughs> as we're going to get into. As, we're going to get in, as we are going to get into. Dissolve any bitterness in our hearts for past wrongs. We must become better citizens who are more productive on all levels of American society. We really must step up after we pass the contract with Black America with no more excuses left in the kittle. Our entertainers should be persuaded to deliver more positive content that leads our youth to make better choices in life. A new pride must develop with these new opportunities and we must fight against negativity, frustration, hopelessness, depression, alcoholism, drug abuse, crime, and violence. So with that being said right there, the last of that, that is exactly what the Most High told us to do. His commandments. Bottom line. Now, being that Ice Cube went ahead, excuse me, King O'Shea, being that King O'Shea went ahead and made that statement, right? I got to say this. Sir, King O'Shea, I'm going to ask you this question. When you were on CNN, why did you not bring out one scripture? Being that the entertainers, which you are, sir, why did you not, and being that you know that you are an Israelite because of your social media, why did you not have the, the balls to say what it is? Why did you not have the balls to say that on CNN when you was talking to that anchorman? Hmm? Isn't that what your contract reflects? It is. So you see, Israel, that's where we go back to Romans 16 and... We listen to actually what the Most High says. Now, remember, he told us also that we have to test every spirit, Israel. We got to test every spirit, every last one. And this spirit here, I just don't jive with. I'm sorry, I don't. It's not right. There are things in here that does not go with what the Bible actually says in regards to the Israelites. So, Israel, let me ask you a question. After reading... All of that, right? Is that what you want? This proposal, is that for you? Is that what you want? So what I'm going to do, as I always do, let's go to the scriptures. And what we are going to do now is see what the most high has for us. We're going to look at some of these promises because 
Quite frankly, we did not ask for a compromise. The Most High did not promise us a compromise. He simply promised his Israelites. He promised us some things. And we're going to see what that is. So let's go ahead and get into this, Israel. The first thing I want you to do, I want you to go to Acts chapter 1. Make sure you open your Bible. I want you to read it for yourself. Don't take my word for nothing. I want to show you everything. Go down to verse 6. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Israel, look, watch, listen to this. Watch, listen to this. When they therefore were come together, who? Us Israelites. They asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? The kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Now, this here is New Testament. Not Old Testament, New Testament. So as we go through this here, you're going to see Old Testament and New Testament, this promise of the kingdom. Let's continue. Now, I want you to go to 1 Kings. Let's go to Old Testament. Go to 1 Kings. Go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 9. 1 Kings chapter 9. Go down to verse 5. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 5. Watch this. Then will, excuse me, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. I can stop it right there. The throne of Israel. Did you hear what I said? The throne of Israel. Not a compromise, not a contract, a throne, a kingdom. Let's go to Luke. Let's go back to the New Testament. Go to the book of Luke. Go down to, uh, go to chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, go down to verse 32. <laughs> this is Christ talking. Listen here, Israel, listen to this. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure. It is your father's good pleasure. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The hell we talk about some contract. When the, when the scriptures say the promise said it is God's good pleasure, meaning that this is what God wants to give us. This is what the most high, this is what he wants to give his babies. Us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He said, I want to give this to you. I want to give you a kingdom. Do you know what a kingdom is, Israel? Do you know what a kingdom is reserved for? A kingdom is reserved for rulership. But here we have King O'Shea coming with a contract that says, please, Mr. White Man, can you please take your foot off of our throats? And the Most High said, if y'all keep my commandments, you'll be cutting their throats. Now, let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh, not uh, 7, ver go to uh, Matthew uh, verse 17, not 7, excuse me. Listen to this. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Israel, that's very simple right there. What did Christ say? First of all, you have to be following the commandments of the most high. That's what repentance is all about. Following the commandments of the most high. When you do that, the kingdom is yours. You see, this is what we have to do. We have to get focused on the commandments. We have to get focused on keeping the commandments. Now, as you saw, even in this little peon contract right here, the Most High could not, <laughs> he implemented in this here, said, I'm not even going to allow this contract to be written without the obvious, which, is, which was the very end of this here, for my Israelites to keep the damn commandments. Now, I want you to go to Mark chapter one, Mark chapter one, go down to verse 15. 
Listen to this, Israel. And this is Christ talking again. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Precept. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So here Christ is saying, first of all, repent and believe the gospel. What's the gospel? The gospel right here on the Lord's statutes and commandments. The gospel. The gospel, Israel. All y'all have to do is believe on the Bible. All you have to do is believe that, number one, I am the big black Messiah. I'm the one that was sent here to get y'all out of this mess. All you got to do is believe on me and keep these commandments and the kingdom is yours. That's it. That's it. Follow the rules. Follow the rules of the house. The house of Israel. Now, whoop, I'm going to drop my phone. I, I, I just be in here breaking stuff. <laughs> now I want you to go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. I'm still shocked that this microphone is even here anymore. As much as I be smacking this thing around. All right. Christ talking again. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So for those of us that are striving to keep these commandments. He said, and, and striving for righteousness, making it happen, making no excuses, but making these commandments work in our lives. He said, the kingdom is yours. Do you see the, the, the do you see the constant promises here, Israel? The constant promise. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 33. Now we're gonna go dip back to the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 33, go down to, uh, go to verse 22. Listen to this. For the Lord is our judge. I want to stop right there. For the Lord is our judge. That is who we are to obey. The Lord is our judge. Not these officials here in America, not these judges. The Most High said, the Lord is your judge. Let's continue. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. So the Most High is the lawgiver. Not that contract. The Most High said, y'all niggas better follow my laws. That is what's important. Do what I told you to do. Because that is what you are going to be judged on. That's it. Not that nonsense contract. Now, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to the last book. Go to the book of Revelation. Go down to, uh, go to uh, first chapter two. Go down to verse 24. Revelation chapter two, verse 24. Let's go there. I'm going to read this here to you. Now, this is Christ talking. Now, remember, this is the last book. Here it is. Watch this. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in, uh, in uh, Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none of the burden, but that which ye have already hold Fast till I come. So he said, listen, for those of you walking in these commandments, hold fast, keep it up. And he that overcometh, meaning for those of you that keep on trucking in these commandments and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. To him will I give power power over the nations. I'm going to read it again. To him will I give power over the nations. Not sitting here begging on a contract. He said, if you keep my commandments, I'm going to give you power over the nations. Let me continue. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter 
shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. Boom. The Most High said, first of all, through Christ, I'm going to put an iron rod. I'm going to put a scepter in your hand. And you are going to rule over the nation. You are going to rule over them with an iron rod. Do you understand what that means, Israel? Let me explain if you don't get it. First of all, this contract means nothing, absolutely nothing. If we keep the commandments, the Most High God said, Per scripture, not racism, not hate speech, per scripture, the very same Bible that that blue suit, white shoe pastor reads out of. The very same Bible that sits on the judge's table that they try to have you sin against the most high by putting your hand on it to take an oath. That very same Bible, the very same book of documents says that if the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, if y'all keep my commandments, you will rule over the nations. So don't try to come at me with any hate speech. Y'all know this book. You know what it say. This ain't hate. This is not racism. This is scripture. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at your parents. You, they were the ones who created you. We don't have nothing to do with that. Don't get mad at us. Now, I want you to go to Amos. I want you to go to Amos. Go, go, uh, Amos, go to uh, chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Go down to verse 11. I'm going to start there. I'm going to start at verse 11. Listen up, Israel. In regards to this rulership, here's the precept. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Now, this is speaking specifically in regards to Judah, the Negroes. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, that is fallen, because the Negroes went into slavery, 1619 Jamestown, Virginia and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. That's talking about the kingdoms when we were in rulership. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. The remnant of Edom. Do you know what that is? Those that were not destroyed in the fire of the coming chariots. Those that were left behind to serve 1,000 years of slavery. I'm going to read it again. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, the other nations, which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. This is all happening because the Most High God said that he is going to be the person that's in charge. He is going to be the person directing all of this. He is the puppet master for all of this going down. He is the director of this great movie that's coming. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treaders of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And you know what that's talking about? That is talking about nuclear destruction. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inherit them, excuse me, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them, and I will plant them upon their land, meaning we going back to Jerusalem, baby, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them saith the Lord thy God saith the Lord thy God saith the Lord thy God not some little nigga manipulating the scriptures no saith the Lord thy God the most high said he is going to be the engineer the architect he is going to be the person making this happen don't get mad at us it's not us 
All we're doing is reading the scriptures. It's not us. So y'all can get mad all you want to. That's your damn business. Oh, well. Oh, well. You, you, you'll be okay. Now, I want you to go now. Uh, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. Y'all already know this one. This is, uh, th this, this is, this is in the goodie bag. <laughs> this is the goodie bag. Let me go ahead and read this here to you real quick. And the people shall take them. What did we just read about? Edom and the other nations. What people? Us, the Israelites. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. It does not get any more clear than that. The people that had us in slavery are going into slavery. We are going to rule over our oppressors. So let me go ahead and say this right here. We don't want this contract. No, thank you. No, thank you. Now, I'm, I, I can say this in great confidence. On behalf of all of the Israelites striving for the kingdom, we reject this contract. Do not include us in this Black America proposed contract. We don't want it. We don't want it. Do you know what that would be the equivalent of? Do you know what if, if you were to accept this contract or agree with it, do you know what that would be the equivalent to? That would be the equivalent to Esau denying his birthright for that red pottage. This hair, no, 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 no. That contract is red pottage. We don't want that. Keep it. Keep your pottage. We don't want it. Now, I want you to go to, let's stay in Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. Go down to verse 23. Here's some more. Like all of these are precepts. If you haven't picked up on that already, all of these here are precepts. I want you to li listen to this. Verse 23, and king shall be thy nursing father. So in other words, the so-called presidents and czars and whatever you want to call the men of power today, the nations of Edom and all the other nations, the, the men are going to be nursing fathers. They're going to be reduced down to slaves. Looking after our children under our rulership. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers. And they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the ground and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. They, sh I love it. Israel, I love it. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for for me. Now we hear that over and over in the scriptures that that's Old Testament and New Testament. We shall not be ashamed that wait on the most high, that wait on Christ to come. Never, never. And that is a common theme all throughout the scriptures. Our people shall never be ashamed. Do you know why it keeps reiterating that? Because our people should never be ashamed to bring these scriptures out against any nation. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what environment. We shall never be ashamed to speak the gospel to everybody. For you Israelites, when you talk to your brothers and sisters, all right, listen here. For, for those of you, hey, you have the opportunity to be in rulership forever. And for all you other ones, the ones that have us oppressed right now, y'all are going into oppression. You're going into slavery. That's what the Bible says. You can't get mad at that. It doesn't matter what that pastor lied to you about. I'm going to show you the scriptures where it says it. <laughs> You're a hate group. No. First of all, let me let me just say this right now. I'm so sick of hearing that about that damn hate group. First of all, listen to me. It's not that we hate you. Okay? We don't hate you. We don't have time to hate you because now that we know these scriptures and we know the promise, we are too busy loving ourselves. And Israel, that's the problem with them. That's the problem that they have. They are no longer the focal point. They are no longer the center of attention. The truth is out. 
And that's their problem. Oh, you're a hate group. No, we're not. We're not thinking about y'all no more. Our focus is now on us. It's now on us. Even with the ridiculousness of this contract here, our people are starting to rise and be like, okay, you know what? We're not going to deal with this anymore here. We're not going to deal with this. Listen, no, no. We want better. Now, some people here are more advanced than others in these scriptures. So that's why I'm like with, with uh, King O'Shea. I'm like, yo, listen, he, he may not know all of this here just yet. You know, but from what he does know, I have a problem with him being on, being on CNN and he didn't bring any of this out when he had the opportunity. Remember, my people shall never be ashamed. I mean, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Now, I want you to go to Micah. Micah chapter 7. And as you can clearly see, this is both Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. It's all the same. It all says the same thing. Uh, go to Micah chapter 7. Go down to verse 17. All right, we're going to get another precept. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. So now, what is this going into, Israel? This is now going into talking about Esau's daddy, the serpent. The most high didn't leave no stones unturned. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They, sh me, they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. So it's not necessarily us that they're going to be afraid of. They are going to be afraid of the most high. They are going to be afraid of Christ. That's who they're going to be afraid of. <laughs> Adrian, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. They, can you imagine being in their position? Think about that. Can you imagine being like, well, wow, like, oh man, that's coming to us? Woo. I'm so glad I'm not in that position. Oh, I'm really not. All right, so now let's go ahead. Let's get the last one. And this one is one of my favorites, as y'all already know. This one is in the goodie bag. This one is in the goodie bag. I want you to go to Joel chapter 2, verse uh, 27. Joel chapter 2, verse 27, because now we got to take this and cinch it up. We're going to cinch it up with the precept that we've already read. Watch this, Israel. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Now, did the Most High say the whole world? No. Did he say every nation? No. He said, I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. He doesn't make it any more plain than that. He said, I'm your God. He said, I'm your God. He said, I'm your God and none else. Meaning nobody else on the planet. Meaning just you Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I'm your God and nobody else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Israel, that's scripture. I just read you all scripture. So... That contract, and I have it on the floor. I keep pointing down to it because that's where it belongs. That contract is garbage. It's rubbish. Absolute rubbish. It's an insult to us to have to ask for fair treatment. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Especially when we know that the Most High has prepared a kingdom for us. For those of us that keep the commandments, there is a kingdom waiting for us right now. And for those of you that have not seen the lesson on the Lord's Prayer, I want you to go and I want you to watch that one so that you can know exactly what the Lord's Prayer is saying. Because... With this kingdom that's coming, it's going to be right here on earth. See, many people believe that we're going to be ruling up in the sky. No, 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 no. The kingdom is coming right here on earth and we are going to rule. There is an actual city that is going, New Jerusalem, that is going to come out of the sky, come out of the third heaven and land right here on earth that 
only the Israelites have access to. Just us. But we'll be all, like I said, we will be all over the world, all over, all sections, anywhere our feet touch belongs to us. Because remember, the, the world was made for our sakes. The world was made for our sakes. That is what the scriptures say. And being that this kingdom has been prepared for us, that is what we need to be looking forward to. Now, Israel, I told y'all I had a treat. This, this gift that was put on me from one of our kings in Israel named C. Lu. Israel, I have been waiting for this imagery uh, this, first of all, this is a full-fledged music video. The talent being displayed right now by our king. One of our kings right in Israel. And I want you to see, we have to go out with this because I want this to be the final image that you see all night. I want this to play back in your head and I want you to pay attention to both these kings that are in this video. I want you to look at everything. I want you to pay very close attention and I want you to embrace this. Embrace it. Embrace this. And Israel, give it to our king. First of all, both of these kings, give it to them. Give it to them. I want you to reach out to them. I'll put their information in the description and king again thank you I need you to listen to my vision, my prescription, it's my mission, Black America, uh, Black America. I need you to listen to my vision, my prescription, it's my mission, Black America, uh, Black America. Yeah, listen, if I was king, I promise every man would be free because of color. Went and get hung from a tree Traveling the privilege, it's a given right Who am I to tell a man he can't take a flight? Who am I to turn a race into some fucking mites? Listen here, this song, it might light. If I was king, around my land we would be legal If you choose, go ahead and get high like a seagull If I was king, I promise healthcare will be free All you gotta do is bring the doctor something to me Like some beef or some chicken I'm on some shit like Why can't we bring back the border system? And for the ones that's enslaving my people I drop bombs on your nation Maybe then we'll be evil Cause what you doing is some bullshit The top kings that repent We need to see you kneeling at the I need you to listen to my vision My prescription It's my mission Black America uh, Black America I need you to
mission Black America Black America I need you to listen to my vision My prescription, it's my mission Black America